Till now in our series of dental anatomy, we have discussed the dental anatomy of the maxillary and the mandibular incisors, canines, premolars and the maxillary first molar as well. In this video, we will be dealing with the dental anatomy of permanent mandibular first molar and that too particularly the buccal aspect. Watch the video till the end to understand it well. Hi, we are Dentorize. Welcome you all to a platform where we help you to conceptualize, visualize and memorize dentistry. If we talk about the permanent mandibular first molar, then these are the sixth teeth from the midline in the mandible on the right and the left side. According to the FDI tooth notation system, the permanent right mandibular first molar is numbered as 46 and the permanent left mandibular first molar is numbered as 36. The permanent mandibular first molar has five cusps, three on the buccal side and two on the lingual side. The cusps are named as the mesiobuccal cusp, the distobuccal cusp, the distal cusp, the mesiolingual cusp and the distolingual cusp. There are two roots in this tooth, the mesial root and the distal root. The entire dental anatomy of permanent mandibular first molar will be discussed under the headings, the buccal aspect, the lingual aspect, the mesial aspect, the distal aspect and the occlusal aspect. In this video, we will be particularly talking about the buccal aspect. The first heading under the buccal aspect would be the dimensions. The cervical occlusal length of the crown as measured from the tip of the cusp, the highest cusp and the cervical line is 7.5 mm. The root length as measured from the cervical line till the apex of the root is 14 mm. The mesodistal dimensions of the crown is 11 mm and the mesodistal dimensions at the cervix is 9 mm. Overall, the mesodistal dimensions at the cervix is 1.5 to 2 mm less than that present at the greatest curvature. The second heading would be the shape of crown from this aspect. The shape of the permanent mandibular first molar from the buccal aspect is trapezoidal with the cervical and the occlusal outlines representing the uneven sides of the trapezoid. Among these uneven sides as well, the occlusal side is longer than the cervical side. The cusps which can be seen from the buccal aspect are the mesiobuccal cusp, the distobuccal cusp, the distal cusp, the mesiolingual cusp and the distolingual cusp. That means all the five cusps are visible from this aspect. Overall, if we see, the cusp which is present on the mesial and the buccal side is the mesobuccal cusp. The cusp which is present adjacent to it is called as the distobuccal cusp and the cusp which is present adjacent to the distobuccal cusp is named as the distal cusp. Lingual cusp being greater in length than that of the buccal cusps can also be seen from the buccal aspect. The one which is present on the lingual side mesially is called as the mesolingual cusp and the one which is present on the lingual side towards the distal surface is called as the distolingual cusp. If we compare the curvatures of the buccal cusp, that is the mesobuccal cusp, distobuccal cusp and the distal cusp, then the mesobuccal cusp is relatively flat. The distobuccal cusp as we can see in the figure is little pointed than that of the mesobuccal cusp and the distal cusp is most pointed if we compare it with the mesobuccal cusp and the distobuccal cusp. But overall the curvatures of all these three cusps are relatively less as compared to that of the other teeth that means these cusps are relatively flat. Flattened buccal cusps are typical of all the mandibular molars. After comparing the curvatures of these buccal cusps, now let's compare the sizes of these cusps. Overall, the mesiobuccal cusp is widest mesodistally, then the distobuccal cusp is almost as wide as that of the mesobuccal cusp, but the distal cusp provides a very small part of the buccal surface because the majority of part of the buccal surface mesodistally is made up with the mesobuccal cusp and the distobuccal cusp as you can see in the figure. After talking about the cusps, now let's talk about the grooves which separates these cusps. The mesobuccal and the distobuccal cusp are separated by the mesiobuccal developmental groove. 
the distal buccal cusp and the distal cusp are separated by the distal buccal developmental groove if we compare these mesobuccal and the distal buccal developmental groove then as we can see in the figure the mesobuccal developmental groove is shorter than that of the distal buccal developmental groove the mesobuccal developmental groove is present mesial to the root bifurcation buccally while the distal buccal developmental groove is present distal to the root bifurcation buccally the terminus of the mesobuccal developmental groove is located centrally cervical occlusally while the terminus of the distal buccal developmental groove is present near the distal buccal line angle of the crown at the cervical third if we talk about the surface of the crown buccally then at the cusp portions the surface of the crown is very smoothly convex cervical to these convex portions we have a developmental depression which runs in the mesodistal directions as you can see in the figure with green cervical to this developmental depression there is also a smooth depression that progresses cervically joining with the developmental concavity just below the cervical line which is congruent with the root bifurcation buccally demarcated in the figure with purple if we talk about the cervical line of this two then the cervical line of permanent mandibular first molar is commonly regular in outline which dips apically towards the root bifurcation as you can see in the figure after the crown let's talk about the root of this tooth particularly talking about the surface of the root we can see the buccal areas of the root trunk and the root some portion of the distal surface of the root trunk may also be seen from this aspect demarcated in the figure with the red also some part of the distal area of the mesial root is also visible from this aspect demarcated in the figure with purple if we particularly focus on the root trunk then the length of this root trunk as measured from the cervical line till the bifurcation is approximately 3 mm in this root trunk a deep developmental depression is present which starts at the bifurcation and then progresses cervically becoming shallower until it terminates at or immediately above the cervical line this depression is absolutely smooth with no developmental groove or fold present in it after the root trunk now let's focus upon the mesial root in the mesial root also if we talk about the mesial outline of the mesial root then as demarcated in the figure with pink starting from the cervical line and then moving down cervically this outline is curved from the cervical line till the middle third portion after the middle third portion till the apex this outline is curved distally till the apex demarcated in the figure with purple the apex is also tapered and is located directly below the mesial buccal cusp if we talk about the distal outline of the mesial root then this outline is concave from the bifurcation till the apex of the root as you can see in the figure if we talk about the distal root then the distal root is less curved than that of the mesial root the axis of this distal root is in a distal direction from the cervix till the apex as you can see in the figure the root may show some curvature either at the apical third in a mesial or a distal direction if we talk about the apex of this root then this root is more pointed than that of the mesial root and the apex is located either below or distal to the distal contact area of the crown now there are certain peculiarities which needs to be remembered for the roots of permanent mandibular first molar if we compare the mesodistal dimensions of both these roots buccally versus lingually then the buccal dimensions are greater compared to that of the lingual dimensions point number 1 point number 2 the roots are thicker at the lingual borders point number 3 developmental depressions are present on the mesial and the distal surfaces of the mesial and the distal root individually which makes the mesodistal dimension less at these points all these points collectively provide a secure anchorage for the permanent mandibular first molar thus preventing rotation of this tooth this is called as the i beam principle and this principle increases the anchorage of each root 
Summarizing what we have read so far in the buckle aspect of permanent mandibular first molar, the first heading was the dimensions of this tooth from the buccal aspect. Then we discussed about the shape of the crown, the cusp seen from the buccal aspect. Then we compared the curvatures of these cusps. We talk about the dimensions of these cusps. We talked about the grooves separating the buccal cusps. Then we talked about the crown surface, the cervical line and then we came to the root. In the root also we talked about the overall root surface first of all. Then we talked about the peculiarities of the root trunk, the mesial root in which we talked about the mesial outline of the mesial root, the distal outline and the apex of this root. Then we talked about the distal root in which we compared the distal root with that of the mesial root and then we discussed about certain peculiarities of the mesial and the distal roots. So this was all about the buccal aspect of permanent mandibular first molar. In our subsequent videos, we will be discussing about the remaining aspects of this tooth. If you like our content, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we upload any new video. Check out our description box for the links of the related videos as well. Stay tuned, stay safe. Thank you for watching.